I was just remembering before I met the training about, um, it must have been about 10 years ago, I was working in central London and um, working in an office along with millions of other people and I had a what I thought was a brilliant business idea, idea for a business that I knew was just going to make me a millionaire. And the idea for my business was that I was going to rent a shop, a small shop in central London, and then I was just going to fill it full of wooden shelves, and on the wooden shelves I was going to buy lots and lots of old um, old plates and crockery, sort of china, china ware, and I was going to fill the shelves with china ware. And then what I was going to do is I was going to rent out time in the shop to people who could come in at the end of the day with a large baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> and um, just really smash the place up. <laughs> because at the end of my day at work, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> and I, I, you're welcome to use this idea, but I would act actually recommend what I discovered was a much more um, long-lasting solution to this anger and frustration I felt. And it was really just this desire to understand you know, who I was and what all of these things I was thinking and feeling meant and you know, how, I, how I dealt with just being a, a human being. You know, with all of the incredible range of experiences that we have and this wild display of thoughts and emotions and sensations and you know, how, how do I manage all of this? How do I deal with it? How do I know how to relate with people and what to say and what to spend my time doing? How do I know all of this? And, and I really looked in many different places, conventional and unconventional and and I never really found anyone that, that could tell me. I heard lots of different <laughs> ideas and I read loads of books. Oh God, just piles of books looking for this answer. Um, and then I, I stumbled across the Balance View training, just, just, just by chance, just by luck. And as I began to listen to these talks from Candice, something was ignited within me. There was a, like a kind of recognition that even though I, I'd actually kind of really given up looking for anything and but here was something that was speaking really directly to me and, and about my experience in a way that it, it just made complete sense. It, it was like hearing something that was absolutely familiar. So I, I knew everything that was being spoken, it was just obvious. And yet I also recognised I'd never heard it expressed in such a clear, direct way. And so it just kind of drew me in, it sucked me in, I, want, I wanted to know more. Because this seemed to be somebody that actually knew what was going on. And, and so I, I just became gradually more and more involved and the more I got involved in the training then the more the nature of reality just became obvious and, and clear for me too in this, in this really magical way. And um, I began to see that I could actually rely on my own experience and look at my own experience and see well, what, what's actually going on here. You know, I've read all of these books, I've heard all of these opinions, but what, what's actually going on here? You know, when I look at my experience, I can see that there is this, just this display of data, all of these different descriptions, experiences, sensations, thoughts, emotions, and, and they're just continually changing. And, and you can look at your own experience now and you can see whether that's true or not. You know, there's one thought and then there's another thought and then there's a sensation somewhere in the body and feeling happy, feeling sad, and it's, it's just always changing. So that was kind of interesting for me to see for myself, that all of these descriptions were always changing. There was this, this stream of data. And then I was given this instruction, well, just take short moments of, of, of relaxing and allowing that stream of data 
just to be exactly as it is, just to, just to flow on by, like a stream does. And um, so, okay, right, I can, I can do that, I can try that, that sounds interesting. And, and I began to take these short moments of just relaxing completely and allowing this, this wild and unpredictable flow of data just to, to be as it was. And it was amazing for me to recognize that although the descriptions were always changing, that there was something that was completely constant. There was the intelligence by which all of this experience that was known was always on. It was naturally present. And whenever I checked, whenever I relaxed completely, there it was. There was this openness, this open intelligence that included all of my experiences, all descriptions. When I checked, there wasn't anything that I could find that had a, a nature separate or apart from this intelligence. They were inseparable, the data and the open intelligence. The data were the open intelligence. They were the dynamic energy, the display of the open intelligence. And as I began to repeat these short moments, this opened up more and more insight into all aspects of my life. And I really began to see the way that I'd given the data this independent meaning and power. And I began to see this in, with certain data streams quite quickly, quite, quite easily. But there were other descriptions and other experiences that just seemed so charged for me and that I had been so caught up in the story and drama around that to take a short moment at the beginning with something like anger, for me, was um, really, really challenging. Because when somebody did something to make me angry, then there was just this hot flush. And I was so used to dealing with that, really, that rush of energy in, in certain ways. Um, avoiding it, getting the hell out of there, replacing it, trying to make myself feel calm and happy. Um, or indulging it, either telling the person why they'd made me angry, telling somebody else about why I was angry, or just going off in this whole story about you know, what this person had done and how dare they, and you know, this sense of self-righteous justification. And it, could, it could go on for like weeks, just from one interaction. That'd be, oh, how dare they speak to me like that. And you know, it would just play over and over and over. And then... At one point, I recognized through my commitment and choice to train up this recognition of the nature of my mind, the recognition of the inseparability of all data from open intelligence, <coughs> by participating in the four mainstays. And it does require all four mainstays for excellent results. At some point, in the direct encounter with anger, and this was actually a couple of years into the training, I decided to allow it to be exactly as it was. The freedom in the immediate perception of the anger as open intelligence, the freedom of choice that that led to, the freedom, the freedom of then the skillful discernment of seeing how I wanted to utilize this energy of anger, whether I needed to say anything or not, and if I did need to say something, then I could say it in a way that was powerful, clear and direct, and not just a knee-jerk reaction to the anger, which had always been my past experience. Now the training up process with anger for me was basically the commitment to take short moments and to rely on the mainstays whenever I naturally remembered. So it was a really gentle process with something like anger that I was so used to reacting to in these habitual ways. Um, and the training process was, for me, I had this introduction to open intelligence. The anger would come up and there would be this rush of anger and I would find myself still reacting in ways that I felt ashamed that I was reacting in. You know, just going off in this rants about what had happened. Or, or bottling it up, and that, that felt even worse. You know, storming down the street, just full of fury and anger. And at some point in that story, I would stop and I would remember the Four Mainstays. I'd either remember just to relax and to take a short moment, 
I'd, I'd listen to a talk, I'd read some text. I would do something to remind myself that what I was feeling, all of the descriptions, were nothing other than this display of open intelligence, as I already knew, but simply forgotten. And what happened as I trained up and I continued to participate was that the length of time between the anger arising and my indulging in this story or my avoiding the anger or trying to replace it got less and less and less. So at the beginning it might be, you know, two days later I'd recognise what I'd been doing. Oh God, you're just emphasising that anger, you've been on this mad rant for two days, why don't you just relax and recognise open intelligence? Oh, God, okay. And then as I trained up more, maybe it would be going on for an hour or so. And it would be the hour of just this torment and turmoil and anguish and tension and, oh, right, okay. And as I trained up, that gap just got shorter and shorter and shorter. Until what happens is the recognition of the simultaneous arising and self-release of the anger <laughs> as beneficial potency. That the key point here is that you can train up your capacity to recognize all of your data as beneficial potency and nothing else. You can actively participate in your own education in the nature of mind here and that is what you'll find at Balance View. And for me, anger now is, um, it's actually really beautiful and I don't mean that in some kind of la-la way, I mean it's, it's so full of power and potency. When I allow the anger to be exactly as it is, it is the fuel for me to see how I want to use my speech, how I want to use my body how my mind reacts to this surge of energy. And through this training, I see that the anger does not have the power to inform the way that I act and the way that I speak. Instead, there is this great fuel. And many times, I've seen that there is nothing that needs to be done with the anger. I can simply relax and allow it to be as it is. But sometimes what's required is a very direct and very clear response to a situation. And I see that that fuel for complete responsive beneficial action comes spontaneously forth when I allow the anger to be exactly as it is. There is real power there. But when it's recognized as being inseparable from open intelligence, from being the beneficial potency of open intelligence, then the response that comes forth is always for the benefit of all. This is what we were built for, you could say. We were built to be these open-ended benefit generators. Everything about us, an expression of our desire to be of benefit. And you train up the nature of mind, you train up this intelligence, so that that desire is coupled with incredible laser-like skillfulness. It has to start with us and taking responsibility for our own data and recognizing it as open intelligence. So when relating with other people, when I feel frustrated and irritated and angry, which is quite often, <laughs> I take responsibility for that. That's the only way I have access to the skillful means of knowing what to say and how to relate to anyone. It has to start with me and my decision to take responsibility. But that's, that's brilliant, that's empowering, because now I can do something. Now I know what to do. And the support network of Balanced View is essential, because just by hearing about other people's experience of their increasing potency, inexhaustibility, in beneficial potency, we can learn so much. We can avoid many of the pitfalls and misunderstandings that happen just by hearing about other people's experience who have gone before. Other people that have more experience of relying on open intelligence, role models. Now, I learn so much from people that have been relying on open intelligence longer than I have. There's the symbolic and the non-symbolic communication of that reality. You just need to be around people, you don't even need to think about it. 
And with the example of something like short moments, which is an incredibly simple practice, but it is very easy to build up different ideas about short moments, rather than just relaxing completely. And some of the ideas that can be built up around it are that when we take short moments, we're observing the data. But that is actually to lay another layer of description upon the short moment of complete relaxation. In a short moment of complete relaxation, we allow everything to be exactly as it is, without the need for any description. You can pause the description just for an instant. Just allow all of the descriptions to be as they are. You can, you can do it right now, just relax completely and recognize this intelligence that is filling this space. And in that is this sense of openness, in that is this sense of ease, in that is this sense of power and clarity. So, with ideas like observing data, we can just relax quite there, relax exactly there because we see as we relax with that description too, that the idea of an observer cannot be found to have an independent nature. So we're not trying to do anything with the data, we're not trying to observe it, we're not trying to allow it, we simply relax completely and allow it to be exactly as it is. This is a really key point. And so to be around a training setting, to participate in trainings, it clarifies the finer points of exactly what it means to rely on open intelligence in everyday life. To bring it from this lovely intellectual philosophy into an everyday lived reality. And this is what we really want. We want to know how to live. We want to know how to relate, how to act. How to be powerful and loving in the world. And I see that the more I participate, the more that just naturally opens up inexhaustibly. So that's the invitation here. Thank you all for being here and for your interest and courage and exploring this together.